Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about indexing. Indexing fields in Microsoft Access for optimum, or optimal, whichever you prefer, database performance. Actually, I just had to look that up. I just Googled that, and there is a difference between optimum and optimal. I always just thought it was a matter of preference. Optimal is an adjective. For example, optimal performance. Whereas optimum is a noun. For example, a properly indexed table is the optimum for database performance. So I learned, I try to learn something new every day. And every time I put one of these videos together, I do a little research and I always, I always learn some new tidbit that I didn't know before. So I love sharing this stuff with you guys. All right, let's talk about indexing. So indexing is one of those features that is almost never used correctly by new users. You can get away without indexing anything at all in a small database. However, as your database grows, you're going to want to keep things running smoothly. As your database gets bigger and bigger, it's going to get slower and slower, especially if your tables aren't properly indexed. So the first use of indexing is to prevent duplicate values. This happens, for example, with an auto number. Obviously, you want to make sure your primary key is indexed so you don't have two customers with customer ID 3, for example. You may also want to use indexing for any field you want to uniquely identify a record with. For example, I index email address as no duplicates. There can be only one. There can be only one, right? <laughs> there can be only one customer. That's amicron at gmail.com. That's how I look up customers in my database. If you try to type in another person with the same email address, you'll get an error message. Some other companies I've seen use phone number to uniquely identify their customers, one of which I have membership at, and every time you go buy something, you get enough of a receipt to wallpaper your house with. And I'm not going to mention any names, but they ask for your phone number to give you your discount points. And that's probably an index field in their database. And if it's not, their IT department is slacking. All right, so that's yes, no duplicates. Now, you can use yes, duplicates okay to have access index the field for the purposes of speeding up searches and sorts. For example, let's say you do a lot of searching on the customer based on their last name. You may want to index that field, but allow duplicates. You still want to allow multiple Smiths, for example, or Kirks. If you search on it a lot, if you sort on it a lot, you want to index it and duplicates are okay. See, when you enter records into a table, the data is stored in no particular order. So if you want to sort this list, it's slow. If you want to search for a single name, Access has to start at the top and run through all the records one at a time until it finds what you're looking for. Imagine how difficult it would be to find one person in an unsorted phone book. Remember those back in the day? Big, giant, thick books that the phone company would drop off at your house, right? That's been a while. I haven't seen those out in a long time. Now I think they're just for businesses, more of an advertising thing. But remember the phone book, right? I'm in the book. I'm old enough to remember that. Imagine trying to find a person in an unsorted phone book. That's basically what indexing does. So when you index a field, Access creates a separate index table. It's hidden. You don't see it. That it manages. It's sorted by that field. And this greatly speeds up searches and sorts on that field. Access can use a faster algorithm, and I'm not going to go into the details right now, to quickly find a value in that sorted index. I have been thinking about doing some classes on computer science, which is the actual math and logic behind this stuff. So if you guys are interested in that, post a comment below. I took that stuff in college back in the 90s, and it was pretty fascinating, right? Different algorithms for sorting and stuff. Now, you might ask, well, why don't I just index every field? Well, you don't want to index too many fields. Doing so will increase the size of your database needlessly, right? Every index table adds to the size of your database. And indexing slows down updates and appends, right? If you change or add records, because Access has to rebuild that entire index table every time you make changes. In fact, if you do more data entry and editing than lookups, you may want to consider not indexing your fields. If you've got a dozen people doing data entry all day long, like in a call center, and you only run reports on that information once a month, go easy on the indexing. It's all situational based on the needs of your business. 
If you do a lot of searches and sorts on a particular field and it's running slow, try indexing that field. All right, let's talk about field types. You can basically index every type of field that you should be using, although you might not always want to. You can index short text, long text, number, date, time, auto number, yes, no, and hyperlink fields. You cannot index all of the evil field types that you shouldn't be using anyway. OLE object, right? Basically pictures and documents that get stored in the database. We don't do that, right? Calculated fields. We don't put calculated fields in our tables. We save that for queries. And attachments, again, evil. Want to see all the evil access stuff? I got a page for it. I'll put a link down below. You can click on it and go read all this stuff. I'm going to make a video on this eventually. I'm still compiling it. In older versions of Access, you didn't used to be able to index memo fields, which are now long text fields. And in fact, if you're watching an older version of some of my lessons, I mentioned that you can't index memo fields. You can now, but I don't really see much of a point of doing that. It can really be a hit on the performance of your database if you have indexed long text fields. So use those sparingly. Okay, now here's a weird one. By default, Access will automatically index fields that end in ID, key, code, num. All right, those suffixes. So if you put a customer ID in a table, even as a foreign key, it's going to get indexed, duplicates, okay. But Access will also index the word aluminum if it's a field, which I think is kind of silly. So if you don't like this, you can disable this under File, Access Options, go to Object Designers, and you'll see Auto Index on Import Create. It'll turn these auto indexes on for these field types anytime you create a new field or if you import it from something like Excel. Just remove these options here. I usually leave ID in there, but like key code and num, I usually get rid of those. That's up to you. Will the extra indexes hurt? Yeah, probably not much. That's not going to probably hurt you that much, but that's just something to think about. Okay, so there's an indexes dialog box. You can view all of the indexes in a table by clicking on the indexes button on the table design menu. This little guy right there, it opens up this thing. Yeah, I know, it's a little cut off picture of my screenshot. In here, you can create something called a multi field index, which is rare, but I use them once in a while. Let's say you routinely search or sort based on last name and first name together, right? Smith, comma, Joe, for example. Creating a multi-field index means that your database now has an index built containing these two fields together, and it doesn't have to search through two separate index tables. Again, this only really makes sense if you've got a zillion records in a huge database, but it can greatly improve performance if that's something you do a lot. I've got a separate video on building a multi-field index and why you'd want to do that. Check out that website for more. Again, I'll put a link down below. You can click on it. Usually the only time I'll set up a multi-field index is when I'm creating something called a composite key. All right, that's an index requiring two fields in the table to have unique values. For example, here I created an index called order with product and it indexes order ID and product ID. So you can't have the same product listed twice on one order. Those two things have to be unique, right? Order one, product two, order one, product three, and so on. Again, Want to learn more about it? I got a video. Here you go. All right? I'll put a link down below. So in summary, indexing prevents duplicate values. All right? Customer ID, email address, whatever. And or you can use it for speeding up searches and sorts. You can either make it unique values or duplicates are okay. But on the downside, you don't want to overuse them because it will slow down updates when you add or change records. And it will take up more disk space. Now, to be completely honest, I usually hold off on indexing until I'm finished building my database. I don't try to think about it as I'm going ahead and working because this is more of a performance issue. Unless you're, on, unless you're dealing with the duplicate value thing, like you want to prevent multiple you know, phone numbers from being the same, for example. But as far as the performance issues go, that's something you can fine tune later. You can always add or remove indexes when your database is, you know, more mature. And, and chugging along, and you're wasting, you know, hundreds of megabytes of space. <laughs> if you want to learn more about indexing, I cover it in my Access Beginner Level 4 class. Yes, Beginner. I walk you through all the different fields in my database and explain which ones I index and why. We'll talk about each field and why you should or should not index it. And this class also covers a lot of other field properties, require it, allow zero length, that kind of stuff. 
We talk about compact and repair, uh, backing up your database, lots more. It's an hour-long class. You can find it on my website. There's a link. I'll put it right down below. Again, it's beginner level four. All right, so it's not an expensive one. And so there you go. There's your fast tip today about indexing. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below. Hope you learned something. I know I did. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.